From Arkansas's breaking news leader, Fox 16 News at 9 starts now. A 64 year old Little Rock man shot and killed while dropping off his brother. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Fox 16 News at 9. I'm Stephanie Sharp. Police say the murder happened just before 11 last night. Fox 16's Price McKeon spoke to one of his relatives. Little Rock police identified the victim as Maurice Culverson. Now, his younger brother told me that the 64 year old held a lot more titles than just brother. He was also a father, a husband, a veteran, a recent retiree and a grandparent. He was also a person who would do anything to help anyone he could. I feel hurt. I feel loneliness. Mark Culberson stands inches away from where his brother Maurice was shot and killed while dropping off their oldest brother Saturday. He did eight years in the Air Force and everything. He'd been married for over 30 years. Give us a call. You, know, you can always remain anonymous with any tip that we can get on this. Little Rock police say it happened just before 11 p.m. near 13th and Jefferson. He was waiting on his brother to go into the house when from what we've been able to determine two younger black males ran up to the car that he was in. Shots were fired. Well, I was told when I got to the hospital they shot on the left and the right side. If it was two young guys all this violence got to stop. All this shooting got to stop. Little Rock police say it's possible this was a robbery that turned into a murder. He gave the car, the money, or whatever. He don't care. Because just like he tell me now, if I got it, I give it to you. Because tomorrow is not promised to nobody. As police search for whoever killed this father and grandfather, this brother, who worked nearly three decades in a prison, has this message. And may God bless you, but I hope they catch you and that you do the amount of time that I did working there. Police say the two men that were seen at the scene ran into some nearby woods. Some bullets did hit a nearby neighbor's place, but no one there was injured. It's still very early in the investigation, but police say they don't have a lot of information to go on, so they need the community's help. Back to you. Now, weather to plan your day with meteorologist Hayden Nix. Well, this afternoon we had another round of showers and thunderstorms, the splash and dash style that we typically see this time of year. And we'll see that continue to fade away here. I'm going to step out and make sure that our radar is animating there. I made a slight adjustment before we came on the air, and I think I forgot to hit the play button, but no worries. Give me just a second. We'll get that taken care of. But you'll see that a lot of this is typically trending in the same way that we've been dealing with. We'll see all of that develop during the peak heating hours. There it goes. Had a little bit more numerous showers today. All that's thanks to that boundary that stalled out just to the south of Arkansas and then started drifting back towards the north. And now that we've lost... One of the ingredients needed to keep these thriving, that heat, will continue to see this fade apart, fall apart rather, and then go quiet for the remainder of the overnight hours. Temperature-wise, it was close to what we registered yesterday. We had some upper 80s to low 90s, but here's what's different about these type of air temperatures. Remember yesterday, our dew point values, that's again, that the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. We had most locations, Little Rock northward in the upper 60s to mid 60s, which means that's Slightly humid, but feels much more comfortable because we were used to these type of upper 70s to mid 70 dew point values over the last week and a half. Now we start to see that boundary lift back off towards the north, and we've had all of that moisture come back, and that's what helped give us those rain chance a little bit more uh, bigger in aerial coverage today compared to yesterday. We'll have mid 70s though tonight with a few clouds as things continue to settle down, but then tomorrow, especially if you're hanging out in the backyard, be mindful of this. Get out if you do see a thunderstorm popping up because we'll still see the chance of some scattered afternoon thunderstorms. Temperatures back around 90 degrees, but it'll certainly feel a lot hotter with the humidity back in there. Mid to upper 90s for heat index values are expected, but looking at the rest of the work week forecast, temperatures may continue to climb. We're going to talk about those numbers coming up in just a little bit. Stephanie. Hayden, thanks so much. All eyes are on Thailand. Four of the 12 boys stuck inside a flooded and dangerous cave have been rescued. Now rescuers are racing against time to save the remaining eight boys and their coach. They have been trapped inside for two weeks. Kim Hutcherson has more on the rescue and the challenges crews are facing now. 
A dangerous rescue mission. Divers in Thailand finally managed to pull four of 12 boys out of a flooded cave. It was a very smooth operation today. I'm very grateful for everyone involved. The soccer team has been trapped inside the cave since late June and were discovered last week. Thai authorities were concerned about the children's health and dangerous weather conditions. But on Sunday, crews decided the conditions weren't improving and took action. Divers entered the cave and miraculously pulled off the rescue. Think about the responsibility of taking a kid under beneath there, and uh, the conditions are uh, really scary. If there's anything like this, they will be very scared. Uh, so full credit to the four that have come out already. The boys were taken to the hospital where they're undergoing examinations, but are said to be in good health. The next round of divers are now replenishing their supplies and filling up air tanks before they can attempt another rescue. The crucial factor is that there won't be panic in the, in the cave. The second that uh, the weather right now, there will not, won't be any uh, intense flooding. With heavy rain in the forecast, rescuers are racing against time as the boys' parents hold on to hope that the rescuers can pull off more miracles and save each person inside the cave. I really, uh, really hope and pray for the kids. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. And just to remind you how massive this rescue is, the 12 boys in the coast were reported missing on June 23rd. Office officials found evidence that the team entered the cave one day later. On June 28th, rescue attempts were stopped because of flooding in the cave. Six days ago, those boys in the coach, they were found alive, amazingly. On July 3rd, food and medical supplies were made it, made it to those boys inside the cave. And again today, four boys have made it out of the cave alive. Eight more and the coach remain inside. Well, back here in Arkansas, three men are dead after a car crash early this morning. It happened in Marion on Highway 77 just after 1 a.m. 58-year-old Charles Massey, 59-year-old Ray Smith, and 63-year-old Calvin Bogard of Sunset were in that vehicle. According to state police, Massey, the driver left the road, hit a sign and a tree. This investigation is ongoing. In a safety alert tonight, an intersection in downtown Little Rock is gaining popularity and with it some traffic concerns. One corner of Capitol and Rock does not have a stop sign. Fox 16's Rebecca Jeffery spoke to people who live in that area who say whether driving or walking, the road can be risky. Rebecca. Yeah, that's right, Stephanie. Good evening. The new additions to the neighborhood in the last year are assets to the downtown community, but those who I speak and work in that area, want to make sure the boom in business doesn't take a turn toward tragedy. I like the energy that downtown produces. I like being able to walk places with my son. A Sunday stroll in downtown Little Rock is common for Chris East and his four-year-old son. Walk to the parks, walk to the libraries, walk to the museums. Well, when they get to the intersection of Capitol and Rock Street, the walk can get a bit, well, rocky. Capitol Avenue does not have a stop sign here. We have to wait for a lull in traffic in order to come across. Traffic that's increased with local business developments like Fassler Hall and Dust Bowl. There's been a lot of positive growth. Revitalizing a corner that may now need some new safety features. It's kind of dangerous. Clark Hunter is the executive chef at Fassler Hall and says something needs to be done. There's been like I think two or three people that have actually been hit by a vehicle. We witnessed dozens of cars forced to inch up into oncoming traffic. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see, you know, across the street until you get about halfway there and then by that point you already have cars like on top of you. But a solution could be simple. I'd say the first step would just be to uh, add a stop sign at this intersection, really a four-way stop at this intersection. Helping safety move in the same direction as growth in downtown Little Rock. The East family reached out to the mayor's office with their concerns. As of a few weeks ago, a traffic review has been ordered, but no word on if it has been performed or if any changes will come of it. Steph. All right, Rebecca, thanks so much. In a crime alert tonight, a Florida man took his own life after releasing his six year old daughter from a hostage situation. Investigators say 39 year old Gary Coley had been holding the young girl hostage since an argument with his estranged wife early Saturday morning. Hours into the argument, he armed himself with a handgun and threatened to harm himself, refusing to let his daughter leave the home. Officers were there on the scene trying to remove the child from that home. Rylan walked out. She walked out very calmly into the arms 
of our sheriff's deputies and we took her away and began at that time negotiating once again for Gary to come out while we talked to Rylan. Officials are awaiting to hear from Florida Department of Child and Families to reunite the young girl with her mother. In a news update tonight, the Trump administration released the names of children under the age of five who have been separated from their parents at the U.S. southern border. They are nearly, there are nearly 100 names on that list. It was delivered to the ACLU. The move was made to keep the administration in compliance with the federal court order. On Monday, there will be a hearing on whether to extend the deadline for reuniting children with their families. That deadline is on Tuesday. Government officials say they need additional time to track down dozens of parents who are no longer in custody, including 19 who have already been deported. In northwest Arkansas, the families of several murder victims want to keep their loved ones' legacies alive. Peyton Yeager shows us how these families in Fort Smith are making sure no child is ever forgotten. There's no such thing as closure. I don't care what anybody says. This stays open forever. Daily reminders recall memories some can't escape. I can see an orange car and it will trigger me to cry. The time was 123. My mileage said 123 miles because I pushed it before I got here. And then my minutes on my phone said 23 minutes till I'm here. Bethany Altpiles' daughter Brianna was murdered at 22 years old in 2010 after offering a ride to her friends. I'll never get to see her graduate college. Six long years passed by before the suspects were put behind bars. I started searching for someone to help me. And there was. 18-year-old Danik Adams was shot and killed in a parking lot. Over a decade later, the person responsible still hasn't been found. You're just running around paranoid thinking that you're going to bump into them in the grocery store and how do you know that's not the person who killed your child? These stories all linked. There's so many out there. Arkansas children homicide survivors in Fort Smith want to show others who feel their same pain that strength is in numbers. The world does not understand what it feels like or what it's like to be a survivor. Through the pain, there's still a glimpse of hope <laughs> that these names, Angela Allen, Cassie Cotta, Brianna Ald, can still have a voice. That I am Brianna. My mom is all about getting to helping people, hence why Brianna was murdered that night. She was helping somebody. Well, Homicide Survivors United is working to have organized meetings in every region of Arkansas. The Dallas skyline lit up blue Saturday night to honor the five officers killed in an ambush two years ago. DART officer Brent Thompson, Dallas Police Senior Corporal Lorne Ahrens, Officer Patrick Zamaripa, and Senior Corporal Michael Kroll, along with Sergeant Michael Smith, died in the line of duty in July of 2016. The shooting was the deadliest for U.S. law enforcement since the September 11th attacks. Well, coming up next, ahead on Fox 16 News at 9. I had to shake my head and read it again. I couldn't believe what I was reading. I was angry, and I'm still angry. After serving 20 years in the military, a man is wrestling with the fear he may have been misdiagnosed, and he's not alone. And later, what one Arkansas school district is doing to help keep kids safe on campuses. You're watching Fox 16 News at 9 with Stephanie Sharp and meteorologist Kelly Dobek. This is Fox 16 News at 9. Life can be stressful. The job, the kids, the traffic. Get away for a while to Buffalo River Outfitters, where you can leave it all behind. Rent a cabin and a canoe or kayak. Come float the river and spend the night in our little piece of heaven. I'm here at Checkers and Rallies. They just dropped a new peach mango island slush. Ooh. I could taste the peach. I could taste the mango. Oh, my God. The brain freeze. Ah! Checkers and rallies, fast foodies know the deal. You've heard about the Everett difference when buying a car, but you also experienced that difference.